Where I want to start the lesson is, as we've done a few times already, back here in the syllabus. I think it's so important we always return to, to thinking about, like, where are we up to? I think it's just a really good habit, um, especially, you know, uh, for those many students, including potentially you, Ryan, if you go to university um, after school, I've actually just started working part-time at a university just last week, and so it's just reminded me one of the primary things that you, you need to do as you head into that space is learn to be much more independent about your learning. Um, you're certainly much more independent now than you were when you started high school, um, but there's another step to go. Like, can you imagine if no one ever marked a role, if no one... Um, if no one sent letters, if you weren't doing work, they just let you fail and then you have to <laughs> pay again and do, enroll in the subject another time. Uh, that amount of independence is great, but it also requires new skills. And doing things like this, looking at the syllabus and saying, yes, what is it that we're supposed to be learning? Can I take responsibility for my own progress? Um, is a really good habit to get into. So let's just review and see what we're up to in this V1.3 section of uh, three-dimensional vectors, right? So, what have we done here? Well, so far we have, let me use orange, um, we've used Cartesian coordinates in two and three-dimensional space, yes, absolutely. Um, just last lesson on Wednesday, we recognized and we found the equations of spheres, which if you use a vector equation, the vector equation of a sphere is the same as the vector equation of a circle, which is kind of nice, it extends very easily. Uh, we've used vector equations of curves in two or three dimensions involving a parameter. Do you remember, like, what, what's the usual symbol we've been putting on our parameter so far? Lambda? Yeah, it tends to be lambda. Occasionally when we have a question that requires a second parameter, like a second, there's another line and it has a different parameter, we might use mu, but really it doesn't matter. These are just conventions, right? Um, so we've been, we've been introduced to that. Uh, I'm going to skip a point, you'll see why in a second. Um, understand and use the vector equation r equals a plus lambda b of a straight line um, through points a and b. So we've, we've actually done this a few times, right? If I give you any two arbitrary points a and b, we know that a is called the, um, what is it again? Starts with a, starts with a p? Which, which vector is it? Yeah, it's the position vector, right? We know um, what that part is, and then the, the b vector in this case, what do we call that? Not the position vector, it's the? Direction. Yeah, it tells you exactly which way you're facing um, so that you can get along the line. And then the lambda, what that tells you is, um, you know, how, do you, how far along the line do you want to go, right? So say for example, a lambda of zero is the point on the line that is the position vector, right? And then a lambda of one takes you further in the direction of the direction vector, and then lambda of two goes even further, and lambda of negative values goes the other way, okay? So um, we've introduced the rest of those bits there. Sorry, did you have a question? No. <laughs> Happy times, okay, I just heard something. Um, now, just notice this next one. It's really interesting to me, right? Um, most of the syllabus, you can see, it says, like, you do things, right? It's like, you, I want you to know a formula or I want you to use a skill. This next dot point here, I'm just going to highlight it. Um, it's unusual. You don't see these kinds of things very often. And hopefully you can um, remember to when I did it. It says, make connections <laughs> in two dimensions between the vector equation or line that we just talked about and y equals mx plus c. Now, do you remember this? We were comparing uh, gradient intercept form and saying, oh, what gradient intercept form is doing is saying, hey, get onto the line, like the y intercept is a point on the line, and then just face in a certain direction. And that's all gradient is, right? So position vector, direction vector are really, um, <laughs> I was going to say parallel, and I didn't mean the pun, but uh, they're quite synonymous with this uh, form of a straight line in two dimensions that we've been familiar with for years. So that's why I made a big deal about it, because the syllabus says, make the connection, right? Um, and then most of the stuff that the rest you can see there is just a bit of a list. It's like determine this, determine that. Um, so these are the kinds of things that the exercises have been working through, right? Now I said um, the thing that I was going to, I skipped over a bit, right? And it's here I'm going to highlight it in a different color. Let's use blue. It says um, up in the third dot point, it says determine a corresponding Cartesian equation in the two-dimensional case where 
possible. Now, we haven't really explicitly done this. I may have assigned a question or two that asked you to do this, but we haven't actually done it together. And because this is quite an important idea, that's actually what I want to spend today's lesson working on. Um, before we have a look at next week's stuff, which will round out the topic, and next week's stuff is actually up here. See, uh, it says prove geometric results in the plane um, and construct proofs in three dimensions as well. That's, uh, that's the exercise we skipped over. So that's what we will be doing um, next week, just before Easter, okay? So, like I said, this bit that's highlighted in blue, that's what we're gonna do today. Just before I leave off the syllabus, do any of you have any questions or things you wanna clarify as we're having a look at what uh, the syllabus tells us we should be learning at the moment? Or does it seem okay to you? Okay, happy times. Well, in that case, um, you can go ahead and make, I, I don't have a nice uh, flowery title for this. I was just like, what are we working with today? I don't know, lines and curves? We're looking at their vector equations. So I called it vector equations of lines and curves. Now, the important part that you need to probably jot down before we lose it off of the screen is um, these two equations that I've, I've provided for you here. Now, they're provided in component form. Um, I've actually come to realize this. I, I'd actually forgotten it um, from the last time I taught vectors and, and spending this time with you guys has reminded me. I don't like component form that much, right? I actually prefer column form much easier. Um, I find it more natural and intuitive to read. Um, however, you gotta, you gotta know it. Morning, Sean. Um, you've gotta be able to translate back and forth between the different forms. Um, and so I'm, I think it's important that I, I sort of give you questions in component form, just like the textbook does, um, so that you are familiar, right? We call this representational fluency. There's different representations and you want to float back and forth between them quite comfortably and, um, and not feel like, oh, one's my favorite. I only use that one. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to be good with all of them. So we've got two equations here. Can you guys go ahead and tell me what, what are these equations? Like the, the question doesn't tell you. What, what do the equations represent? Okay, so line and a sphere is very close. Um, we do definitely have a line over there on the left-hand side. By the way, can you tell me how how could you tell that it was a line? What what sort of gave it away? Uh, yeah. So hopefully you recognise those two bits we looked at before, right? There is a. Po Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to highlight. Um, there's a position vector hanging out here at the front, and then that parameter is multiplied by a direction vector. So you're like, oh, I I, I know what this does, right? Now, on the right-hand side, um, it's very much like a sphere, but there's a clue that tells you it's, it's not quite a sphere. Um, what's the clue that gives away that it's not actually a sphere, even though it's very closely related? Uh, yeah, there's no, um, there's no k value. Yeah. Yeah, nicely spotted. So because there is no um, k value, there's no third dimension, um, what you've got here is the, the sort of two spots, uh, sorry, the two coordinates of the center of the circle. Um, the circle, not a sphere, is what sort of gives away, this whole question is two dimensional at the moment. Um, as a point of um, interest though, not that we, we're looking at it at the moment, this is, this is not a sphere, it's a, it's a circle in two dimensions. But if I did ask you to put this into three dimensions, you wouldn't get a sphere. You would actually still get a circle, but because like the Z axis can do anything, yeah, you just go straight up and down. So in fact, what you've got is a cylinder of, well, a hollow, a hollow cylinder with no top and bottom. It just goes infinitely up and down in the Z direction. So that's a bit weird. Um, we're not looking very much. It's not really within the scope of the course. We were just looking at the syllabus just now. Um, but if, if you were asked, like, what is, what is this thing, right? If you wanted to know, it's a cylinder that just goes on forever. Okay, so, yeah, sorry, what did you say? Oh, okay. It, could there be a K component in the V vector? Um, the answer is yes, there could be. And I suppose it's kind of, um, I haven't, hopefully there's enough context here to tell you um, that this is in a, we're considering in a two dimensional space because yeah, well, like if that, well, that's not what I wanted to draw. Um, if that V vector indeed was X, Y, Z, uh, remember, it's a, um, it's a variable, right? This vector can, be, can take on different values. Um, if there was an XYZ there, and you only got an I and a J, I guess that implies there's a zero K there, which, is, which I guess is the cylinder situation, right? However, given that everything else is two dimensional here, it is, um, I think, a reasonable conclusion to draw, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that we're playing in the land of two dimensions. We're on a plane, okay? But, but really good point, actually, and I've, I have left it ambiguous, to be fair, okay? All right, so now that we know what the two equations represent, let's actually think about what this question is asking, right? It says, uh, find the Cartesian equations. So again, just, just scrolling back just a little bit, see there in blue, determine a corresponding Cartesian equation. That's what we need to be able to do in the two-dimensional case, which is why I've given us this. And then what I want us to do is find the points of intersection between the line and the circle. If indeed there are multiple points, there could of course be uh, just one if the line is tangent to the circle. Um, there could be none as well, like it could just fly off and, and not intersect. Um, but as a spoiler, yes, they do intersect and we're just going to try and find out where, okay? So let me just pause for a minute. Um, have a look at the line in the circle. Which do you think is easier to find the uh, Cartesian equation for? What do you reckon? Uh, second one. Second one. Yeah, the second one, I agree. Um, the circle is actually very easy to work out because for a Cartesian equation of a circle, all we need is a center and a radius. And you can more or less read that off of the vector equation of a circle, right? Uh, what's the center we're looking for? It'll be one and eight. Very good, so let's, let's jot that down. So this is, uh, this is us doing part A at the moment. So the circle will have a center 1, 8, exactly as you said. You do have to be careful, right? Because when you have a look there, um, it's take away the whole vector. So really it is take away i plus 8j, and that's where you get the 1 and the 8 from. Great. There's the center. What's the radius? Uh, sorry, uh, 13. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is, this is so sneaky, right? This, is, this gets to the fluency thing, right? So we're like, ah, okay, read the equation. The vector equation says the distance, the magnitude of this vector, is root 13. Um, and so that, that distance, that is by definition the radius. Um, the reason you're thinking of 13 is because when we write the Cartesian equation in a second, what's on the right-hand side of the Cartesian equation? Yeah, it's R squared, so we will get a 13 in a second, right? So, center and radius, can you guys go ahead, can you just tell me, can you read it out, what is the equation that I want? Uh, it'll be, um, yeah, x minus final squared, um, then plus y minus a whole squared equals 13. Fantastic, okay, well done. So it's, it's Pythagoras, isn't it? It's uh, the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides, and then you've got the sum of, sorry, the square of the hypotenuse on the right-hand side. Okay, 